Today we're going to continue working on our 1956 Volkswagen Oval Window Beetle project. We're going to address one of the most common areas for restoration, which is the lower door pillar. This is a heavy duty version of one of the door pillar replacements. It's not going to be exactly right for this year of Volkswagen. We're going to make some changes to it. We're going to make it right and we are going to size it up cut out the old pillar and replace a section of pillar uh, to make it as good as new. So this door can hang uh, just the way it was supposed to be from the factory for many years to come. The door pillar on the driver's side of this car is in need of a major replacement. Years of rot and rust means that there's no metal left to connect down to the structural member. What I did is I drew a line on here and I very carefully cut it with an electric cutoff wheel to remove the rusted component. With the old metal cut away from the area, we need to look up inside and there's, see there's a support structure inside as well. You can see the heat tube that conducts the heat up into the body of the car. And we need to take a look at the new replacement panel, this one's for the other side, and determine how much of the panel to use, where to cut it, where to weld it in place. I don't think there's any sense in replacing any more original metal than is needed. With the lines in place, we can take it to the bandsaw and cut it into parts. One clear difference between the replacement sheet metal that we received and we've started to work on and the original was that the original had two holes for door mounting access. In this case, the replacement piece is designed for a wide range of cars and it didn't have a hole here. I used a step drill bit like this, it's made for sheet metal, to drill the right diameter hole. Then I took a hammer with a nice round blunt end like this. And the little trick that I used was I took a deep socket, placed that underneath the metal, put the nose of the hammer down, and then gave it a few taps with another hammer. I followed that out off by just working the metal in there and what I did is it, uh, it bent down the edges to match the other hole. Now the other thing that I noticed is that the inner panel only had been drilled and tapped for three bolts but since we need a fourth for the oval window I went in and tapped it using an 8mm by 1.25 tap and now we have four bolt holes that are ready to take the bolts of the door. Now when I cut the piece to height on the bandsaw, a uh, surprising thing happened and the interior support that actually holds the door, it uh, came away, which is great because we were going to need to take it off anyway. It just shows that some of these aftermarket replacement parts aren't particularly strongly built. Imagine if we had welded the whole piece in and found out that your door is being held on by only one or two tack welds. So it's really important when we do this to strengthen things as much as possible, especially on something that gets as much abuse as a door pillar. But as you can see, uh, we're going to have to do a two-part process where we first clean up the metal inside and install the boss that holds the door, and then later prepare the outer sheet metal so that we can rosette weld it into place onto the inner boss. But this will ultimately replace our piece perfectly, and we'll be able to weld and grind this so you never know that the replacement's been done. On the previous episode, we made a replacement panel to go right in this section of the car. I'm going to use this tool now to cut along the line and remove this piece of metal. It's also going to give us unprecedented access for our door pillar replacement. <laughs> next step before we do any welding is to remove all the old paint and traces of rust from both parts that we're going to weld in. While we have access inside we want to make sure we eliminate any trace of rust because I used a, a commercially available rust converter uh, just to cover this rust and it converts it into something that's neutral. It's a liquid form uh, just covers the rust and it's going to prevent any further rusting up in that area. Okay, when it's time to start welding, 
got to wear all the protective equipment. You need a good welding helmet. This one is solar activated. Uh, you need some thick gloves. You want to make sure there's nothing flammable around. And uh, you definitely want to have a fire extinguisher handy. Um, typically, when you're welding heavy steel, you want to clamp it into place. I find with sheet metal, if you have a nice thick glove and you're very careful for the initial tacking, just to use your hands to hold it in the exact spot that you need. So now I'm going to put this up into place and we'll shed some light. Always handy to have a bright light around when you're welding. I find if you just find a place where the metal is lined up exactly, use that as your first spot. Once it's tacked into place, you can check for alignment. In this case, I'm going to put the outer sheet metal on temporarily. Make sure the holes are all lined up. And they are. And I'll continue with a few more tacks. This is the time for adjustment of your piece. Get it exactly where you want it. Because if you don't do it now, you're never going to get it right. People are asking me all the time, how in the heck do you fit a piece of metal that doesn't quite look like it fits and get it into place? And my answer to that is jump in with both feet. One of the tools that I always have while I'm welding is I have a body hammer like this. Uh, it's a flat peen hammer uh, and also a dolly of some kind. Now I have a number of different dollies to get into various spots. You never want to hammer something uh, without backing it up with a dolly on the back side or you can really distort the metal. Uh, in this case, I'm working with some fairly thick steel and it's inside. I'm not too worried about distortion like we're going to be when we're welding the actual body panel. So the heat uh, can be, you can put a lot of heat into this part. When you're working with sheet metal, you need to dance around, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, but right now, I just like to get in there and work on the fit. And like I said, if you mess up, you can always redo it. Uh, but just a bit more tweaking and I'm going to have this in place. So working from the access I have on the back side, uh, I'm just going to get in there with the full chisel and a few well-placed blows. It's bringing this nicely in line. And now we'll continue from the back side. clean up. This piece is now welded in place. Now that the inner support structure is welded in, it's a really good idea to actually try and fit the door and make sure that it's actually going to fit properly and we have enough adjustment to allow for a perfect door gap. This is the time to do it. If we've messed up in putting the support in, it's going to show at this time. Normally this is a good job for two people. I'm going to wrestle my way through it here. The holes did line up and I have enough in and out adjustability here that I'll be able to bring this right into line to where it needs to be. So I think we're good to go at this point. As I was removing the door after the first test fit, I did notice a slight problem that I was uncomfortable with. I noticed that though the door gap seemed to be okay, the face of the door was not lining up as well with this bent edge here as it was closer to the top of the door up here. It was actually set in a little bit and what I discovered was that the plate that with the weld nuts that actually uh, secures the door it's allowed to slide uh, it does this obviously uh, for adjustment purposes but I was noticing it was catching and when I looked into it I reviewed from the back side and I saw why the fourth bolt that we tapped here actually had left a fairly large burr that was catching on the retaining strap so this particular piece was getting caught there. You can see I've ground now in that area and it's allowing it to slide. So when the time comes to adjust the door properly, we should have a full range of motion.
but I wanted to make one more slight change since this is a part that you cannot see it's hidden by the sheet metal and I want to slightly enlarge this gap here so just in case when we go to make the adjustment this needs to come a little bit further over it's going to allow us to do so because I will remove a bit of metal from this area I'm now going to mark the outer sheet metal piece into place and I'm going to use a sharpie to mark any final adjustments that need to be trimmed before we weld this in place. In the case of a door pillar, it needs to be absolutely in line. You don't want to have a wrinkle or a bubble here. So what I'm going to do is piece my piece of sheet metal back into the place that I've allotted for it. And as a last check, I'm going to take a, just a regular framing square like this. To the door and make sure I have no gaps all the way along consistently from the top to the bottom here. Now wearing my protective gloves, I'm going to hold the outer sheet metal cover in place on the door pillar. As before, lining up one spot that matches exactly, I'm getting ready to tack this in. I rest the nozzle on top of my gloved thumb, and I put the first light tack weld in place here. I'm going to continue along, pay the high points where it fits perfectly. For example, right here. This is when you need to use your hammer and persuade this for a perfect fit. Occasionally, I'll use the sharp end of my hammer to hold the metal and weld slightly above it. Now, being careful not to concentrate the heat all in one area, I've dialed the setting on the welder down one step, and I'm going to start welding in between the tacks. Again, I'm going to do a little bit and then move to somewhere further away to help dissipate the heat. Because we have the access of this panel being removed currently, the one thing we can't forget to do is weld the inner support structure that we mounted onto not only the old remaining steel, but the new steel we have here. With a final sanding, a quick coat of body filler, you'll never know this change was made. Seems to me like it's ready for another 50 years of service. So until next time, get out to your shop or your garage and burn the midnight oil.